Are you thinking about buying or selling a property in Calgary, Alberta? Maybe it's the draw of the Alberta Advantage that's making you think about packing up and moving across the country and relocating to Alberta. You know, it is a good spot, but hold up, there are some negative aspects to living here, especially if you are coming here from Vancouver or Toronto, where many of my current clients are coming from. It might be a bit of a culture shock. So in this video, I want to let you know about some of the negative aspects of living here so that there are no surprises. And we're gonna get into it right now. Now, if this is your first time to this channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in Calgary, Alberta, then subscribe below. I'm trying to put out two to three videos per week. My name is Ryan Giller with Real Broker, your Calgary Realtor, and I get calls and emails all the time from people who are thinking of buying, selling, or relocating to the Calgary area. I'd love to help everyone out, so if you do have some questions, you know, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. You can even schedule an appointment with the Calendly link below, and all the, all the information that you want is in my written description below. All right, let's get right into it. All right, let's start off here. Number one, so this is the most common complaint about living in Calgary, Alberta, and that has to be the weather, especially if you're coming here from more mild places like Southern Ontario and British Columbia. It's a bit of a downgrade coming here. It can get exceptionally cold, down to minus 40, although that is still pretty rare to get that cold. It does happen though once or twice every winter. Um, what I hate the most about our weather is how unpredictable it is. We have extreme weather fluctuations. It could be minus 30 one day in the wintertime, then it could be plus 15 the next day. So it can change that quickly, and it can be a bit annoying if I'm being honest. It could be April or May. You think that spring is, is here, then all of a sudden there's like a wicked snowstorm, and it makes you question why you're living here. And we've also got shorter summers just because of our higher elevation and, and our latitude. So we've also got shorter summers, and to make it worse, the past five years, I would say, we've been getting bombarded every summer with forest fire smoke from Alberta and from British Columbia. Now, I don't know the source of it, like what's going on. It could be climate change. It could be forestry management but it is a real concern and it's actually ruining our summers here as well and hopefully this year is not quite as bad as the previous years and I think if you're moving here from somewhere that has a better climate either within Canada or internationally I think you'll be disappointed by our shoulder seasons we don't really have a very nice spring or fall it just seems like we're in winter then all of a sudden we're in summertime summer ends very quickly then our fall is very brief then it just turns into winter like right away some other annoyances that I have with our climate is it gets cold at night, even in the summertime. So it could be July, it could be plus 30 during the daytime, but at nighttime, sometimes you have to wear a jacket just because of our high elevation. Now, some other things I don't like about our climate is we do get tornadoes in Alberta. They seem to bypass Calgary for the most part, but uh, they are a real concern in Alberta. My mom was actually injured in a, in a tornado in the Red Deer area, so they do happen. We do get vicious storms here with hail, and hail damage is a real thing. I've had car hail damage before, not fun. I've sold a property, and before the buyer could take possession, it was shredded by hail. There was like $50,000 worth of hail damage. So it can be a blessing in disguise, though, because sometimes they'll get like a new roof or new windows with insurance, but hail is definitely a concern in Alberta. And the last point here, now this is not Calgary specific. It could happen all over Canada, but I get really bad pollen allergies living in Calgary. For me, it typically happens in April or May, but uh, there's all sorts of different grasses and pollens here. And so it's hard to say which one is gonna hit you the most, but uh, it's definitely a concern for me. That, that time of the year drives me crazy. And the next point, let's talk about geography. So one thing I don't like about Alberta as a whole is that we are a landlocked province. So we have no access to international ports from within Alberta. So it can be a bit annoying and it can, it can harm our economy. Like we saw back in 2017 or 2018, Alberta and BC were fighting over the Trans Mountain Pipeline. So there are issues like that being a landlocked province. I don't find that Canada runs all that um, efficiently. It's a, bit, it's a bit dysfunctional in my opinion. Um, other issues with geography, I find that Calgary and Southern Alberta are severely lacking large bodies of water. Um, it's definitely not like a like a lake country or a cottage country vibe out here like you see in Ontario or like a resort type um, vibe like in British Columbia. So we are lacking in the in the bodies of water area. And the next point here is that Calgary itself is kind of off on its own. It's in a very isolated location. If we look on the map, Edmonton is about a two and a half drive north of us. Winnipeg is the next major city east of Calgary and that would be about a 13 to 15 hour drive. So quite a distance. Um, if we look south of Calgary, the next major city is probably Las Vegas, and that might be like a 24-hour drive. And then we have Vancouver to the west of us, not far as the bird flies, it's about 600 kilometers, but it's all mountainous, so it does take about 10 to 12 hours to get to Vancouver. So we are kind of isolated, we're off on our own. 
definitely not like Vancouver where you have Seattle is like a two hour drive or in Southern Ontario, you've got a million big cities that are around that part of the country and, and the States as well. And Calgary itself is becoming a bit of an urban sprawl. It does cover a massive area and it is a bit of a car city. So I'll just pull up the map here so you can see kind of what's going on. So here's Calgary, obviously. We can grow in almost all directions. So this is definitely gonna become a massive city over time. So this section over here, this is actually an, an Aboriginal reserve. So we're not gonna be growing in this area. This part of Calgary, Bears Paw and Springbank, this is essentially part of Calgary, but there, it's more reserved for luxury acreages. I can't see us building out this direction. There are some enclaves in here, like the Harmonies and like the watermarks that are newer areas that are being built. But I don't think we're going to be building like your typical neighborhoods in this section of the of the area. But if I zoom out here, we can grow in these directions forever. So south of Calgary, east and north, and all these towns that are uh, like around Calgary, like the Strathmores, Chestermere's, Airdrie's and Okotoks, all of these towns have like doubled in size in like the past 10 years. So I think over time, Calgary is gonna become like Dallas, Fort Worth. It's, it's gonna be like a massive metroplex. So you're gonna to need to have a car if you're living in Calgary for the most part. There are some pockets in the inner city that are fairly walkable. And if you're curious, you can reach out, I'd love to help you out. But for the most part, this is a car city. And with a growing city, you have the typical complaints like traffic, congestion, there's all sorts of construction at all times in the Calgary area. But almost every city will have that, so Calgary is no different there. And the next point, let's talk about real estate. Now, this one is very concerning to me. I just see our prices rising too quickly. Now, I can recall before COVID having listings on the east side of Calgary for single family detached homes, and the prices were like $300,000. And I, I recall at that time, I couldn't give these properties away. It was tough to sell them at those prices. Nowadays, those homes are selling for like $550,000. Just huge increases. It's happening too quickly and they're going up too fast. If we look at rent before COVID until now, it just add an extra thousand dollars onto your rent pretty much. So even our rent is increasing too quickly. I just find our overall cost of living in Calgary is becoming too expensive. Now I've got a video specifically on this topic, which you can find right here. And the last point about real estate that I don't like about Calgary is I find that our building standards have suffered the last like 15 years or so especially in the deep suburbs. I find that all the properties look the same. There's no more unique designs. The streets are so narrow, like all the properties are like squished together now. You could be half an hour drive from the core and the neighborhoods are still so tightly packed together. Like we have so much space here. I don't know why we need to cram them all together. It seems like the, the developers are choosing profit over having some kind of standards enforced by the city. Just my opinion. And there's nowhere to park in the suburbs as well. Like you can park in your driveway or in front of it, but if you have guests over, it's hard for them to find parking in the deep suburbs. These are just some of my thoughts on how we're building our new homes in the suburbs, which I don't like. And the next point, let's talk about culture, arts, and entertainment. Now this is typically a gripe about Calgary, this, this section, but I'll touch on it. Now Calgary is not known as being the most lively and entertaining cities. In fact, it's kind of a boring city in my opinion. It's just like a working class, safe city, good jobs, very family friendly. It's not a resort city like Vancouver, and it's not like a metropolis like Toronto where there's like six million people in the area. It's just, it's not that scale of a city yet. It's just a very unassuming business class city in my opinion. So it's not all that lively, but it's a good place to live. Now I travel quite a bit and whenever I go somewhere, I always ask myself, would I live here or would I live in Calgary? And the answer is always Calgary. It's one of the most livable cities in the entire world, but it's just kind of boring. And the next point, and this one comes up quite often when you're talking about the negatives of living in Calgary, in that we don't have that many art galleries and museums here. In fact, I'm born and raised in Alberta. I don't think I've ever been to an art gallery or a museum in Alberta. So it's a, it's a common complaint that you hear. And uh, especially compared to Toronto or Vancouver, that's just my take on this, but I'm more of like an outdoorsy adventurous type versus going to all these different art galleries and stuff like that. And another complaint that many people have about Calgary is that a lot of artists will actually skip Calgary and go to Edmonton instead because of our saddle dome has terrible acoustics and it's a bit old. But this will change the next few years as we're building our new arena and concert venue. So this, this should help Calgary out in the near future. And the next point here is that our downtown is not that vibrant. It's more of like a nine to five. And after business hours, it, it sort of empties out. And I know that city council is trying to, to fix this and make it more lively, but it is definitely a work in progress right now. Not like Vancouver where everybody wants to live downtown, it's always lively. 
Not the case in Calgary. It's more of like a nine to five business environment at the moment. And let's talk about dining. Now I find the past 10 years that Calgary has improved quite a bit and I think our, our food scene is actually quite good. Maybe not as good as Vancouver or Toronto, but maybe not that far off. I think it has improved quite a bit. And the last section, I'll just touch on some of the random points that I, that I dislike about living in Calgary. And the first one being our boom and bust economy. We are very reliant on oil and gas still. Even though we are diversifying, I think, um, we are still heavily reliant on what happens in the oil and gas market. Um, so right now, prices are good, so our economy is quite good. But it's not always that way. In fact, 2015 to 2020 was a bit of a recession. We had lots of firings, layoffs, a lot of companies went under, a lot of companies relocated out of Alberta, and it was quite a, a tough environment. So that does happen. It can be a bit of a boom and bust economy. Um, the next point, I find that our utilities are quite expensive in Calgary. And let's touch on transit. Now, people always complain about our transit system in Calgary, but I find it's actually not too bad. My main gripe with it is that the frequency of the train cars could be improved, but it actually covers a good chunk of the city. And we are always in, in, like adding on to it. We have the green line coming in the next few years. So it's not terrible. I just think we could improve how often the trains come. Well, that about sums up the downsides of living in Calgary. Like any city out there, there are some pros and some cons. And I would say the pros definitely outweigh the cons in Calgary. It is one of the most livable cities in the entire world. I hope you found some value in this video. Whether you're moving next week or next year, Give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email. I'd love to help you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.